Okay, so this video is about global climate from IB Geography, and the syllabus point is the enhanced greenhouse effect and international variations in greenhouse sources and emissions in relation to economic development, globalization, and trade. So first of all, we're going to establish between the natural greenhouse effect and the enhanced greenhouse effect. So the natural greenhouse effect is the pro natural process by which the atmosphere traps some of the sun's energy, warming the earth enough to support life. So that was covered in a previous video, and then we have the enhanced greenhouse effect, which most mainstream scientists believe that the greenhouse effect is increasing, increasing artificially as a result of human activity and greenhouse gas production. So greenhouse gases include carbon dioxide from fossil fuel burning and methane from rice paddies and landfill sites, for example. And there's also a, a plethora of other kind of greenhouse gases, which we'll go through soon. But yeah. It's kind of this idea that the natural greenhouse effect has been amplified to kind of unnatural levels that warm the earth. Okay, so what are sources of greenhouse gases or types and sources? So we have water vapor, which is a byproduct of fossil fuel combustion and then electricity generation, from maybe from irrigation for agriculture, removal of natural vegetation as this cuts evaporation rates. Um, that's kind of the reasons behind why the concentrations may be higher now. Carbon dioxide, combustion of fossil fuels for heating, electricity generation, or transporta transportation, removal of natural vegetation as this reduces the carbon sink for photosynthesis, the petrochemical industry, steel and cement heating processes, and then we have nitrous oxide, which comes from fertilizer use. It's released in the breakdown of manure, fertilizer, and urine. It comes from vehicles, so in urban areas, a lot of vehicles will cause more production of nitrous oxide. Thermal power stations, burning biomass, rainfall can lead to nitrous compounds going to the soil, le leading to more microbial activity, bacteria and sewage treatment facilities. Then we have methane, which can come from commercial farming because of cows and also sheep waterlogged soils and rice paddies and also as we saw in another video it can come from permafrost which isn't in this table but that's another source tropospheric ozone so in the 20th century there's been a rise in carbon and nitrogen in the lower atmosphere in the presence of high levels of sunlight a photochemical reaction takes place which creates this tropospheric ozone so i mean from the word you can kind of tell it's in the troposphere which we also covered in another video so this ground level ozone is a constituent of a photochemical smog and that's a major pollutant and um, greenhouse gas of course and it can also come as a secondary pollutant from vehicle and factory emissions. And then finally we have chlorofluorocarbons which are used as refrigerants, aerosol propellants but the use of CFCs is actually declining. It's used in foam expanders and also in industrial solvents. Um, and as we mentioned before, it was in a lot of old refrigeration units, but that that kind of has been discontinued because of its known impacts on the earth and the greenhouse effect. So these are the main kind of greenhouse gases and their sources. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the link between the enhanced greenhouse effect and economic development, globalization, and trade. Okay, so let's think. Economic development. So this is kind of the general trend. Of course, there are anomalies to this, but this is kind of how I would see them linking. So as countries become more developed, initially there is, an in, there is a mechanization of the primary sector, so agriculture, kind of manual labor jobs, creating a lessened demand for manual labor. Okay, so yeah. So we're having more machinery involved um, as countries develop. And then mechanization calls for the increased use of oil and gas as it becomes more developed and the population become more industrialized and urbanized. Then that further increases carbon dioxide emissions through domestic use as well. And then when income increases nationally due to this economic development, there's more opportunity for investment into green technologies and more awareness of global warming because of more education, and kind of awareness and use of media so that then should hopefully and maybe lead to decreases in greenhouse gas emissions and increases of renewable energy 
Um, of course, this is not like the, this is not the situation in every country, but it's kind of a general trend. And of course, it doesn't apply to the whole population. Um, but meanwhile, investment abroad and demand for imports from abroad can lead to greenhouse gas emissions elsewhere. So it might not necessarily be in the host country, but they could be investing into kind of developing developing countries. Um, for example, a lot of TNCs will invest into um, lower income countries because of the cheaper labor costs and kind of less regulation so that kind of allows them to actually create more greenhouse gas emissions um, instead of reducing them even though at home in their home country they may be making efforts to reduce them okay and then we have globalization and trade linking to the enhanced greenhouse effect so the trends may be because as some countries start to develop and become more globalized there is the increased need for transport by car truck ships etc so that would mean more greenhouse gas emissions and there's also an increased demand for industry which leads to high emissions um, kind of in production and that's kind of what happens when you decide to export or import it increases the kind of market and that means more consumption overall okay so one example of this is China, which is a huge manufacturing center for many countries. Meanwhile, some countries may significantly rely on imports as they become more globalized, meaning emissions do not increase domestically as these goods are actually produced in foreign countries. And one example of this could be the US, which is one of the world's largest importers. So there are kind of dual effects in terms of globalization and trade, um, depending on the kind of trade links that exist.